All right, as if the AI world does not move fast enough already, Google actually released the Firebase Studio, which is our AI coding platform, similar to platforms like Bolt.new, Lovable, Cursor, all of these coding IDE platforms. And in this video, as a non-technical person like myself, I'm gonna use this platform and see how beginner friendly it actually is. And I wanna see, is it actually good? On this channel, I've covered things like Bolt, Lovable, Data Button, all those platforms that allow you to code with AI. But is this something that, me as a non-technical person can use to build out software and potentially SaaS. Apparently you're able to build your own mobile apps along with web applications like you could build with those other platforms. First of all, this landing page looks absolutely awesome. The question is, is this functional for somebody like myself? Am I able to build something and not get confused as a non-technical person? So first of all, let's go ahead and try this in real time. This is my first time trying this out. In this video, there's gonna be a pretty candid video giving my thoughts. All right, so first things first, we're gonna get this user interface asking us what we want to build. It says we could prototype an app with AI and it's giving us some example prompts here of what we could build. Next up, what we could see is we have a new workspace that we can add. We could import a GitHub repository or upload our own project, as well as we have all these different frameworks here. Me as a non-technical person, I don't really know what all this is. I just want to be able to build an app that looks cool and is functional. So that is something that you can configure, but let's go ahead and actually move forward on building out our app. So I'm just gonna speak with our Google Firebase Studio and basically tell what we wanna build. Let's build an app that allows you to drop a voice note and then automatically summarize that voice note with AI, along with the ability to actually save this voice note to my profile. Okay, so this is a very simple app. I don't know if I'm gonna build this full thing out. I just wanna get a sense of what the functionality and what the user interface of this platform is like and what the workflow is gonna look like if I actually use this compared to other platforms. All right, so it looks like it's using Google Gemini, obviously, as the LLM, because this is a Google product. Google's been shipping a whole bunch of different products recently, so it makes sense that they're launching their own AI coding platform with this. So it's calling this Voice Digest, and it basically gives me a breakdown of the features. So there's voice recording or voice to text transcription, AI summarization, save to profile, and then profile management. So it also gives us this color palette here for the like style outline for our application. So that's kind of interesting. Haven't seen that in the previous platforms I've used. It's breaking down the layout, the typography, iconography, the animation, all this stuff. So I can make changes here if I want. However, let's go ahead and just proto type this app. So let's run with this. Let's move forward. And now we're going to see Firebase Studio actually writing the code here, as we would see for any of these other platforms like Bolt or Lovable, for instance. And on the right hand side, you could see the user interface where we're going to be messaging back and forth with our AI agent, if you want to call it that. All right. So I believe using this is actually free. So I'm going to come to perplexity and actually confirm this um, in real time. Is the new Google Firebase Studio free to use? All right, so basically it's saying Google Firebase Studio is free to use, allowing users to access its features without any upfront costs. It provides three free workspaces for development and users can also receive $300 in credits to explore additional capabilities. So interesting. I wonder if we get charged once we actually host this or something along the lines of that. So let's go back to our app. Let's see what it's built us. This is honestly a very simple looking user interface. This doesn't look nearly as good as something like Bolt or Lovable or Data Button, all these other platforms but let's give this a shot and see kind of what we could build with it. Looks like I need to actually add my Gemini API key in order to probably use the AI summarization that I added here, this feature here. So let's go ahead and do that. Looks like I can actually just auto generate this Gemini API key because this is connected to Gemini, obviously, since it's a Google product. So that's pretty interesting. Makes it really easy for us to actually connect our AI functionality to our app. All right, so it's basically saying that the first iteration of our app prototype is ready. Try it out in the preview window and describe the changes you'd like to make. So let's go ahead and see if this actually works. Hi, so I have an idea for a video where I actually try out the new Google Firebase Studio in order to build my own application with AI to see if it's possible to do it as a non-techie. Hi, so I have an idea for a video where I actually try out the new Google Firebase Studio Okay, so interesting. It actually got our recording here. So it took that audio file, it stored it here. However, it looks like it, for whatever reason, it's saying I don't have enough information to transcribe the provided audio file. Let's summarize. Interesting. Okay, so for whatever reason, that is not working. Let's just come back here. For whatever reason, the AI summarization is not working for the voice note. It's capturing the voice recording, but it's not summarizing this. 
or doing any of the other things that I wanted it to. One thing I wanna mention is me speaking to my computer here. I'm actually not typing it out. I'm using something called Aqua Voice, which allows me to literally just click a button on my keyboard for my computer and just speak into my computer and it automatically just like translates that into text so I don't need to actually type. It's one of my favorite AI tools that I've been using. So just wanna throw that out there. It looks like it actually went ahead and made these changes. Let's see if it's working now. Yeah, I have an idea for a video where I actually showcase my top five AI use cases for platforms like Google Firebase Studio. Okay, so interesting. So it's still getting this error. Yeah, so I have an idea for a video where I use AI to actually build an app using the new Firebase Studio. The hell? Okay, so for whatever reason, it looks like it's pulling some fake information here. So let me go ahead and fix this and let's get back to actually demoing out the platform. All right, so I actually was playing around with the user interface and it looks like if I come up here and click this, I could click on certain aspects of this and I could just like click on, like for example, I wanna like click on this button, I could click this and I could just explain how I wanna change it. I want you to make this button light blue. All right, very interesting. For whatever reason, it actually did not make that change. So I'm running into some issues here. It's not very smooth to use, I'm not gonna lie. This isn't the best thing that I have used when it comes to AI coding, if I'm being completely honest. So if I come down and click here, this is actually a pretty cool feature, even though this looks very odd, like it doesn't look great in this user interface here. So apparently what it uses, is it uses Excalidraw in order for me to actually make changes to the user interface of my app here. So Let's just click on, I mean, I can't even do anything with this because it's just not loading correctly. So let me refresh this, see if I can actually test this functionality out without running into issues. All right, for whatever reason, the layout still looks very odd, but what I could do is I could come here and I could literally just draw on here and I'm like, I could like point right here. Let's change that to um, like blue. I wanna say like, let's say I wanna make a change to this. Let's just say, let's make this light blue or let's like, I could also like circle something it looks like. Okay, interesting. This is an interesting way to interact with our application. I haven't seen this in other platforms where it literally like pulls up that user interface where we could like, you know, use it as a whiteboard in order to make changes to our app. So that's cool, pretty interesting. I don't know if it actually works or how useful that would be, but that's something interesting that I wanna know. So my first impressions here as a non-technical person, this platform is a bit clunky. Like maybe it's better if you use this simply for coding as opposed to like vibe coding and building with AI and just prompting. But I could come here, I could like edit the code right here, just like any other like AI coding platform or IDE. So potentially this could be helpful for you if you know how to code, but the prototyper, I'm just not super impressed with. It's not blowing my mind here from the first initial interaction that I'm having with it. I'm gonna continue to play around with this, but that is my initial thought here as I am recording this video. You guys saw me play around with this. I think obviously the reason why this could be super impactful is because this integrates directly with Google's Firebase, which is essentially a way for us to interact with data. So we could create user accounts store information in our applications that we build directly inside of Firebase, which usually I don't like using Firebase when building apps with like lovable data button or bolt. I simply like using Supabase. It's much simpler. It's much easier. Firebase is pretty clunky to use, but I guess if you're building full stack apps, that could potentially be useful to have it directly integrate there and with all of Google's products. However, like I said at the beginning of this video, how, how friendly is this for a non-technical person? In my opinion, if you're using bolt and lovable and you have no idea how to code, stick with that platform. I wouldn't even try this. Maybe Google will make some updates to this and make it much more beginner friendly and not have a whole bunch of errors like I ran into right here. But yeah, that's my thoughts. I hope you guys got some value from this. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe. I cover all things AI for non-techies where I show people all these new platforms that are coming out and how to use them if you're not a technical person and hope you guys got some value from this video. I'll see you guys in the next one.